This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's another amazing day in my home base of Colorado because we had sunshine, gorgeous weather yesterday, and we had snow today. So that totally changed everything. And it's one of those wet spring snows, so it'll be gone instantly in the process, which is a good news. But we're going to step away from the snow today because here's something that we all want to do. Actually, we want to have a barrage of snow to come in. And that's something called a super fan. And it's not really a phrase that I have used uh, gingerly or or even at all until our guest really said, you know what, here's what's really been hot when I've been talking about it. And as he told me about it, I said, not only is that hot, we want to really bring it out because it's how to bring, bring in those droves that every time they hear your name, they think, what is new? I, I'll just get it. Whatever it is that this person is doing, this author is doing, I will rock and roll with it and just get it. Literally sight unseen. A super fan. And don't we all want to have super fans that wait for every new item that you create, whether it's a product, whether it's a book, whether it's a presentation, whether it's a coaching program, whether fill in the blank, they hear about it and they want to get it. So... This is what we're going to be deep diving in with, and with me today, who has brought it to my attention, that phrase, which I love, is Bill Van Orsdale, who's the Chief Marketing Officer of BookFuel.com, and we'll get into a little bit what BookFuel is all about, but let's just kind of jump into this. So, Bill, why don't you tell us, describe, first of all, welcome back, you've been on with us before, to to author you your guide to book publishing. What is a super fan? How do we get them? What do we create with them? And where do we find them? So let's start with the definition. All right, Judith, thanks. Thanks for having me on. So a super fan, and this can apply if you've got a band, if you're an author, um, but it's essentially someone, especially if you're an author, they're going to buy every single book that you write. Uh, And on top of that, they are going to tell probably a couple of other people and convince at least one other person to buy your book. They're going to join your fan club. They're going to provide you a permission-based email, uh, which means you can let them know when your next book is coming out. Uh, They will engage with your publishing and your marketing efforts. They will respond. They will help you. And and frankly, they'll pre-order your next book. They love your voice. They love the way you write. They love how you help them. They love how you entertain them. They are a super fan. And and, uh, we all want them. Oh yeah, do we? We want we want to to find them, keep them, nurture them, multiply them. <laughs> that's right. We, we and, want them to breed. They, <laughs> right. In fact, that's there's a there's a viral aspect of super fans. It's it's critical that that you can't uh, ignore. Now, of course, super fans are great for our ego, right? It's always nice to have people on our fan list, um, and of course, they buy books. But there is so much more that a super fan can do for you. As I mentioned before, they are spreading the word about your books. They're convincing other people to buy your books. Okay, that's important. That's pretty basic. But they're also spreading the word about your author brand, and they're convincing others to try any of your books. Um, you may even have super fans that are so helpful that, um, and we, we've all faced this, you know, if there's a troll out there who's, who's um, trolling you or writing bad reviews, you know, your super fans may come to your rescue. And sort of shout them down in the marketplace, if you will. So that can be valuable. Well, you know, that is very, you know, Bill, that is a critical thing to say because sometimes when authors, I I get often routine emails or even sometimes phone calls from someone who has gotten a really, a a, a god awful review, let's say on Mm -hmm. Amazon and they, and they want to take them on. And I, and I just say, "Mm -mm 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 -mm, stop. That's a kiss of death. That's a kiss of death. 
um, let someone else do that for you. And I know that last year I got an email out of the blue from Guy Kawasaki that someone took apart his book on it. And I said, you know, let me go up and make some responses to it because it was clear the guy hadn't read the book. He mm-hmm. had not read the book. He, he, he looked at the inside the book that Amazon has, you know, search mm-hmm. the book, and he decided to write a, a scathing review. So yeah. I, said, I said, you need a guy, just step away and let, because he was really stunned when it happened. And I mm-hmm. said, let some of us go ahead and just really counter and do the shout down for you. And you can be pristine and just step away. So that's, that's what right. your super fans will do for you. Yeah, and, and, and I also think about it on your author website, and because you're probably going to have a blog where you're writing, and uh, occasionally people are going to make comments that uh, aren't very attractive. And, and you, as you said, you want to stay out of the mud, and it's nice if you've got some friends that can gang up on the trolls and sort of shout them down. Um, what your superfans can also do for you is they can engage with you in a way that helps keep your writing centered on what the market's looking for. So... Uh, uh, your super fans are going to be giving you feedback about what they liked about your plot or what they liked about your recipes or what they liked about your characters or what they liked about the methodology that you laid out in your self-help book or your nonfiction book. And they're going to give you ideas and guidance for what does the next book look like? What does the book after that look like to help you stay focused on what are your, what, what are your readers, what are your super fans out there looking for? Um, you can engage with them to get input during your publishing efforts, for example, on your cover design. You know, asking your super bands about your cover design is a great way to get them interested and excited about your book or your next book. And you can even tap into your super fans as beta readers. Um, what they also can do, which is super valuable, is they can provide social proof, visits, likes, reviews, blurbs, blog comments. So your super fans are the ones out there that are sort of putting up the gold star on your works and showing others that, hey, this is worth taking a look at. And and if you've come to this page, you maybe you've never heard about this author or this book, it's worth looking at. You can well, even get... <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say on the review side of it, what's really important is that if you got if you did a beta test, let's say with a book, which I think is a brilliant idea, both the cover get their input. In fact, you can make a special page within your book acknowledging your super fans, you know, which would be kind of fun to do. But you could also do that, have, have them ready to go, that when you do, you have your official launch day, that whether you've had your book up, I, I know I have a book that that is at the printers right now that won't have an official launch day or at least availability until next month um, on Amazon. And so no one can put, when you're closed off, you cannot put a review up. But you can have these ready to go, and you can do alert out to all your super fans, and it's, it's the go, go, go day. Now put them up, because one of the things, Bill, that I've learned, that once you hit the magic mark of 110 reviews on Amazon, Amazon really starts paying attention, and they will help do the shout-outs for you. Uh, and I know right. I've had a, a couple of our client, my clients, and li- regular listeners to this show have had that experience where Amazon has sent out a direct email to everyone who has ever looked up a book in a certain genre recommending their books. That's worth mm-hmm. thousands of dollars. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it sure is. And the, and I, I've heard the same thing about the 100 or the 110 review mark. Um, I've also seen some analysis that indicates that uh, Amazon will, uh, for the first month, the first 30 days that your book is up, um, they will uh, they will peg your sales rank at an artificially high level, sort of giving you the doubt, giving you the benefit of the doubt, if you will. And then, mm. as you fill up your review list and uh, your sales begin, your pre-order sales begin, um, you are essentially having you get the chance to prove to Amazon that you be- that you belong at a high sales rank so that they can continue to recommend you and, and give you good visibility. So your super fans can absolutely help you with that. They can help you with uh, organizing and generating attendance for book signings or tours or launches or, or book launches. So in short, your super fans help expand your marketing reach beyond what you can achieve on your own. It's sort of like a free marketing resource from the people that really like what you're writing. So let's talk about which, numbers, which- though. It's exciting, yeah, and numbers really because because now we go to the crunch it. So how do you monetize the super fans? Is where we're going. I'm assuming, right? 
Yep, absolutely. Right. So, you know, the question is, okay, so all right, I, well, I like a super fan, but I need more than one, right? How many do I need? And uh, this is the way I do the calculation. I, I sort of, I imagine mm-hmm. that um, I can put out four books a mm-hmm. year. Now, that's a pretty aggressive schedule. Maybe I can only put out two a year, but let's assume I could put out four romance books or four science fiction or four sub uh, uh, self-help books a year. And and let's just say, just for the sake of marketing, let's make the math very easy. I can earn $2 a book. Now, that's, that's pretty minimal. Unless you're selling your book for 99 cents, that's probably about the least you can make on your book uh, and have it available in the Amazon ecosystem. So mm-hmm. if I can do four books a year, $2 a book, and I can collect... 4,000 super fans. Now, this is not going to happen on day one. Maybe I can get, I can ramp up to 4,000 super fans after a year of effort. I can collect 4,000 super fans. So now that means that each of those 4,000 super fans, they'll each buy one copy of each of the four of my books. I'll earn $2 from each of those sales. So that's 4,000 super fans times four books is 16,000 books sold times $2 a book is $32,000 in net profit back to me. So this is, you can call it royalty, you can call it commission, but that's what, that's the check Amazon's gonna send me. But wait a minute, we also said that one of the things that super fans do for me is that they're gonna convince at least one other person to buy my book. So now I'm looking at about 64,000 a year in royalties back to me from Amazon. Now that sounds a lot like I'm starting to make a living as a writer. Which which can be done. You know, I had a discussion with someone today saying, you know, there's no way anyone can make a living writing. I mean, I, I've done it for over 30 years, full time with speaking and writing. But I think that one of the challenges is, is there's it, there is this myth out there that people cannot make a, a, a living writing. And the reality is there is a lot of people that do, but they have a game plan. Wouldn't you agree, Bill? There's a game plan Absolutely. in play? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm a huge, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, what you're you're talking about in the development of your raving fans, I guess that's what Seth Golden would call them, your raving friends, is Mm -hmm. that when you put those together and you can see what this could do on an exponential basis and start filling it and flowing it, that you could really do well. And I'm telling you, my mind is clicking away because I have a new book launching next month. And my mind is clicking away and a lot could happen very quickly. We're going to be right back with me is Bill Van Orsdale. We're talking about how to get an choir and what it will do with these super fans. We'll be right back. This is Judith Bryles. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 1106 Design. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with? If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful
is the TogiNet Radio Network, radio with a cutting edge. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, I'm loving what we're talking about because the development of super fans and what they can do for you and for your book is is truly unbelievable. And it can evolve you. Maybe your dream is to become a full time author and writer. This is the way to do it to start to to start evolving and developing those people who love your words, who love your advice, who love the way you tickle their funny bone with your humor writing or you, you know, you rom- romance them to the page. Whatever it is that you do, developing those fan base is really critical on that. So Bill, we're talking about we're crunching numbers here. Uh, right now, Bill yeah. Van Orsdale, who is the chief uh, uh, finance marketing oh, yeah. officer for Book Fuel, and we want to talk a little bit about Book Fuel before we leave. And I should tell everyone, you know, a disclaimer: Bill is one of our fabulous sponsors and speakers at the Author You Extravaganza here uh, in just three weeks. So you should be coming. But we'll talk about that a little bit later too. So, Bill. Let's let's continue to crunch our numbers. And we were talking about New York, um, what people can expect yeah. when they're expecting. If they, the dream is there's still that dream that everyone you know New York's going to love me. And uh, I mean, I used you know I was with New York for a long time, um, and it really it was the way to go. But it's certainly I don't believe the way to sell books today. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, I I'm a huge fan of the AuthorEarnings.com website. That's the the research website that uh, Hugh Howey, a very successful self-published author, has put together, and mm-hmm. he and he's gone. He and the and his his companion, the data guy, is the sort of the mystery guy, uh, have have created a series of reports and analysis um, that really lay out a pretty believable picture that if you are going to be uh, if you're going to make it as a mid-list author, and that's and you feel like that might be as high as you're going to be able to go uh, as an author, that you really want to do that as a self-publishing author and not a traditionally publishing author just because it's much more lucrative to do it that way. And if, if your job, whether you traditionally publish or self-publish, is to go out and find these super fans, build your own marketing list, build your own permission email list, get people excited about you, that, gosh, if you're going to do all that effort, you might as well be getting the maximum uh, royalties possible on your book, and self-publishing is the way to go. Well, and that means you need to learn the business. You need to understand that this is a business, um, and too many authors do say, oh, but I just really want to be writing. And I think what they, they're they really saying is, I don't want to promote my product yeah. because because well, a book's a product. Yeah, it is. Well, so let's talk about, you know, let's use some industry terminology and talk about, you know, mm-hmm. how do I find these mythical super fans? Um and, and and right off the bat, everyone has to understand finding them and engaging with them. It not only it takes work, but it also takes a willingness to extend yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you, really you know, to, I should, let me let me yeah. ask you this, Bill. So, when you're going out to find these super fans, is this all uh, a fiction? You know, or a, 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 really, is it fictional? Is this just really part of my my 
fantasy mind? Are they really out there? Because I think that's what people are going to – we have some doubting Thomases and Thomasinas out here. That is this is this really all just myth or is it really – is this real? Oh, oh, I'm convinced it's absolutely positively real. Um, you, you don't have to look very far in our current uh, culture of – uh, express yourself, tell, share everyone with your opinion, tell them what brand of coffee you like, what brand of shoes did you, that you're wearing this morning. Um, this concept that there are uh, brand ambassadors out there for you to tap into who would like to be um, and, and who are interested in being part of the uh, Judith Bryles movement for uh, crowdfunding your book, who want to get on that bandwagon, who want to understand that methodology and that, how that works. There are absolutely super fans out there to be had, and the, and we'll run through some numbers here in a minute. But the bottom line is that you know it's not like I'm I'm suggesting that you have to go out and and grab ten percent of the market of the people that read your particular genre uh, as your super fans, which is a, a pretty hard goal to reach. It's actually a very very small number. But let's talk about some of those numbers. Um, there's a there's this industry term out there called super reader. It's like super fan, but it's a little different. It's it's what sort of the traditional industry researchers call the people that are buying and reading one book every week. So these are truly the super readers out there. They are the folks that are plowing through books. They love romance. They love science fiction. They love self-help books. They love to listen to books in the car while they're driving. They are plowing through 50 or more books um, a year. And they're called, the industry calls them super readers. So let's talk a little bit about the demographics of who they are, because you as an author need to find your super fans from within the super reader pool. So the industry has gone to some pretty good lengths at identifying who these people are. Let me tell you about what we know about them. So first of all, they are reading books so fast. They're reading romance books so fast. They're reading science fiction books so quickly that they are outstripping the ability of the traditional publishers to keep filling a subgenre with titles. So they are reading the bestsellers so fast that they run out of titles. They run out of everything. On, they go look in the bookstore. Everything on the shelf is old. They've read it. Okay? So, Bill, so, Bill, it's not just they're, they're outstripping their genre, whether it's sci-fi or whatever, whatever's new. Mm -hmm. They have far outstripped a particular author they're loyal to. That's right. That's right. They, yeah. they, they, you know, if, if a traditionally, and there are a lot of houses that will say, you know, dear author, I only want one book from you every two years, or, or at best, I want one book a year from you. Well, you know, yeah. I like Stephen King, and if he can mm -hmm. only produce one book every two years, but I also want to read some other books in the genre, I'm going to have to go read other authors. Mm -hmm. So these super readers are looking for new titles. They are willing to take a risk on self-published authors. Here's how we know that. Super readers mm. purchase sixty percent of all ebooks. They are responsible for forty nine percent of all ebook revenue. They skew more female than male, so there's about sixty two percent of them female. Thirty eight percent of the super readers are male, so um, that might have something to do with the romance genre. They typically skew a bit younger than traditional book buyers. So the, the people that are reading the fastest are typically um, just a little bit younger than your average reader. 55% employed full-time, 14% are retired. Their median household income, 50 to 75K. I've got, I'm giving you a lot of stats here, but I'm kind of mm. trying to give you a sense of they have disposable income. They're a little bit younger. They're more often female than male. They buy the majority. They drive the majority of revenue in the ebook space. 47% in the suburbs. 26% in small towns, 27% in the city. So they skew, if you look at the demographics in general for the country, we are kind of an, an urban culture. Um, uh, your fast readers are not necessarily in cities. So think about that when you're thinking about offline promotion, for example. And how many are there? The United States has about 16 million super readers of all genres, right? So there are about 16 million people in the United States who are reading 50 books a year. So, so we're so, yeah yeah we're yeah. you're talking about fifteen percent of the population I guess, I guess if we're where we are 4%. now with our population but I think that's four yeah. percent 
Four percent. Yeah, you're right. But 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 then remember that includes young children and all those things. So then if you find mm-hmm. line it, it's really a much greater percentage because mm-hmm. uh, they're mostly adults or they're going to be reading in that area. And when you did throw out the number that the majority were women. I knew instantly we were going after romance. (laughs) Self-help, and self-help will be in there, too, because women are much more inclined to buy self-help. That's right, and I've got a couple of examples of those that we'll talk about in just a minute. So Mm -hmm. here's the bottom line on on your super readers. They are hungry for another book in their favorite genre, and they're ready to buy this week. So it's not like you have to wait till Christmas. You don't have to wait till Valentine's Day. You don't have to wait till you know some holiday. They are ready to buy your book now. So there's there's no better time to jump in than right now. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Here's what I just triggered too. So if let's say that you have been writing along, especially for our fiction listeners here, is that I've heard enough data from other authors that uh, that are members of the author you community and people I've worked with that somehow the magic number is three. By the time you hit the third book, all of a sudden maybe you you know you're rooting in a little bit. You've got your storyline down. You're starting to build a little bit of a base, maybe a mini super reader, super fan follower base. But all of a sudden they go back and they start picking up your other stuff so finding out those super readers that if it hits on your book and you have other books whether it's fiction which it certainly would be bigger here or non-fiction that is connected with the area they were after you may all of a sudden see sales pick up in a lot of other areas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely it's it's one of the benefits of having of being a self-published author, right? You can you can make sure that your book is always in print, in print, it's always in print yep. and ebook. And so as as you the bigger your catalog, uh, the better the chance chances are that you're gonna find more supervans that are gonna go back and buy your whole catalog. Well I, I think that is just really <laughs> Hot, hot. All right, we're about 30 seconds out from our next break. So I I think one of the things that we want Bill to do some digging into is how do you find them? How do we do go about the connecting um, and get them where you bring, you either take that, so super readers, and you convert them to individual super fans so you'll rock and roll with them? Or, Or is this a chicken or an egg question, Bill? Which comes first, the super fan or the super reader? Uh, super readers are already out there. They're out there right now. Super so you don't fans. have to reinvent them. We don't have nope, to reinvent right. them. All right. That's so right. we're going to be right back out, and we're going to probe in, and how do we get those super readers to convert them to super fans? This is Judith Riles. You're listening to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing, and my special guest is Bill Van Orstor, who is the Chief Marketing Officer with BookFuel.com. Is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. This is the Tokinet Radio Network. Radio with a cutting edge. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers 
allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, Beth me, Bill Van Orsdale from Book Fuel and is is really opening up, I think, a great window of opportunity for everyone as he really op- opens up two key phrases that you want to add, super readers and super fans. Super readers are out there. They're hungry for anything in the genre that they seem to love and they want, it, it's like, the you know, the giant the, the, the on the, uh, Oh, Audrey, the flower that feed me, feed me. Yeah. <laughs> they want more books. All right. So you need to, we're going to find where these players are so that you can convert them from super reader, which they're never going to give up on, to super fan, which means puts them right in your corner. So, Bill, where do we find our super readers? Well, yeah. And, and, and as I mentioned before, it's a, it's a little bit like playing detective. You sort of have to profile what your super fan looks like. And by the way, a, a super reader can be a super fan of multiple authors. Yes. Right? Um, if, oh, if, you're, sure. if, you, if you do a good job and you engage, um, it doesn't mean that you're going to have exclusivity. Uh, if they're buying 50 books a year, they could be the super author of 50 different fans. So I'm the super fan of, super, of 50 different authors. So let's, let me just give you some numbers I think that are a little bit interesting here. Um, there's a, a 2011 Harris Interactive poll of adults who read at least one book uh, in the prior year. Now, it's, been, it's the most recent poll that I can grab genre-based market share data out of. And I think that we, we could probably okay. agree that in four years, it probably hasn't changed too, too much. So when we look at that poll, one of the things I want to figure out is if there are 16 million general super readers in the United States... How many of them are, for example, romance readers? Okay, well, if, if we look at the poll data, if we look at the Harris poll data, I think it shows something like 76% um, of all uh, adult readers have read a fiction book, and of those, um, I think it's 18% or 19% have read uh, a romance novel. So I sort of do the math a little bit, and that means that there are 2.8 million super readers of romance out there. Mm. And so, so in order for me to build a base of 4,000 super fans, carve out my super fans out of that 2.8 million super readers, that means I need to convert 15 hundredths of a percent of those 2.8 super million readers into my super fans. So I'm not talking about 10%. I'm not talking about 5%. I'm not talking about 1%. I'm talking about 0.15% gets me to my 4,000 super fans. I'm not going to do it on day one. I'm not going to do it on week one. I'm not going to do it on month one. But if I set, uh, set for myself as a goal to engage with and create and build a mailing list of 4,000 super fans who like my voice, who like my writing, mm-hmm. I could probably get that done in a year or two. Mm-hmm. Let's take another example. So mm. let's say that you are uh, writing a self-help book, okay? Mm-hmm. The, Harris, uh, the Harris poll, well, I'm sorry, yeah, the Harris poll number says that there are, again, about 76% of all adults have read one nonfiction book. And actually, I think I just reversed it. It's 18% of those have read a, uh, a self-help book, and I think it's 26% of those have, uh, 26% of the folks that have read a, a fiction book have read a, um, uh, a romance book. So there's 2.2 million super readers of self-help books. 
And if I want to build a fan base of 4,000 super fans who like all of my books on dieting or on cleansing or on how to be a better mother or a better public speaker or whatever it is that I'm an expert at, mm -hmm. I need a one fifth of 1% of those 2.2 million super readers. So again, not 10%, not 5%, not 1%, 0.2% is all that I need to get in my corner as a super fan in this genre. So we're really, we're talking about converting a fraction of 1% of those super readers. How do you do that? So the second that, step is... And that's the magic the, question. Okay. Yeah. So you've, yeah, I, I, we're down into fraction numbers, which that's I right. like, which I like a lot to chew on that. So where, where are these people? So you, I'll give you sort of seven ideas about how to hmm. think like a super fan. So the first, the first, the absolute first concept is to find a super fan, you have to be a super fan. So, of course, I'm sure that if you're writing romance or you're writing in a fiction genre or you're writing in a nonfiction genre, you are out there reading what's new, what's hot, what's current. You are keeping track of your marketplace. We talked earlier about how this is a business. And sort of one of the things you have to do in this business is understand what are the other authors in your space doing to stimulate demand, right? They're not really competitors because if I read a great science fiction book, I probably want to read another great science fiction book. So that, that other author isn't my competitor. It's sort of like they have a nice house next door to mine. They keep their, their grass and their garden very nice looking. People like my whole street. So number one, super fans are browsing the top 100 paid and the top 100 free lists in their preferred Amazon genres. So step one, you need to go and look there and understand what kinds of keywords and key phrases are in book titles and book descriptions and build uh, a, a sort of a tag cloud, if you will, of the keywords and key phrases that seem that the successful authors in your genre seem to be using because that's important for your discoverability. So that's sort of step one. Be a super fan, do what they do, go look at the top 100, top 100 free, top 100 paid. Number two, I want you as an author to, to cautiously lurk around in the appropriate groups in Goodreads, Good, Goodreads and Library Thing. So Goodreads and Library Thing are two um, reader communities out there. Goodreads is much bigger, um, much more successful. Library Thing is still out there. They still have millions of users, and it's worth looking at. Find out what readers are talking about and interested in in those communities. You want to kind of tap into the zeitgeist, the zeitgeist, the community, the mindset of your target reader. What, are, what is getting them excited about the books that are out? What are the things that they don't like? Number three, join a local or internet book club for your genre. Not to pump your book, but to meet your reader. I, I have to tell you, as a writer mm -hmm. of science fiction, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of friends that read science fiction. We're kind of quirky, and, and we were like, we're, we're, there, there's this field around us that keeps us apart. So I need to go out and, and put myself out there to meet other people who read what I write. I want you to also consider offline activities. So I said a, a book group where you might meet in person, but there are other offline things you can do, like meetups to, that are relevant to your genre to go and just kind of get a feel for what those readers look like, what, they, what, what do they talk about, what, what are they into, what are they not into. Uh, number four. Um, I know that we talk with authors, especially nonfiction authors, a lot about the value of Twitter and building a following and how do I use Twitter to my advantage. Um, here's something I want you to do uh, for the Twitter users mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. I want you to find, I want you to monitor, and I want you to use the trending hashtags that are popular with your target genre. I'm going to give you an example. If you are a romance writer, you should be following and looking at and maybe even tweeting the hashtag Outlander and Outlander Returns. So, of course, we, we all know that Outlander is the, a very successful uh, book-to-TV miniseries, which is burning up the airways, the airwaves, and the TV mm -hmm. series just had its mid-season restart a couple yeah. of uh, weekends ago, yep. and the, the Twitter sphere is full of it, right? Mm -hmm. And well, so you know you what, just, Bill? It's not just yep. Twitter because hashtags are used aggressively in Google Plus right. now and um, on Facebook. 
And 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 one of the things I do know that we, you know we're we're talking about finding your super reader, but there's a, there's a maybe a little hybrid here. There the super reader also is in the media where they are looking okay. for people with respective expertise. And if you start using these hashtags in titles and a variety of things, you may surface come you know rise like the cream right. um, to bring up their attention out there as well. Uh, and if you're a science fiction writer, an example of a hashtag, a, a trending hashtag would be The Force Awakens, right? Mm. Just today, I don't know how many views it's got already, but the second trailer dropped for the, the December Star Wars movie, and the, 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 the Twitterverse is going crazy. So the I, can is a <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. trending hashtag. I can hardly wait. If you've got a self-help book, Jim, uh, uh, hashtag Jim Ratter, hashtag best of the day, you know, do the research. And go find out what in your genre are the trending hashtags and piggyback. So number five, we're still getting in the mindset of our super fan. We're figuring out mm-hmm. who they are, where they go, what, what they think about and talk about and what they want to hear about. Find and follow the most popular book review blogs in your genre. Example, if you're in the romance genre, www.dearauthor.com. Right? That's a, a pretty well-known uh, uh a book review blog that has got a little bit of community around it, a little bit of a reputation around it. This is, these aren't hard to find. You're doing Google searches. You're going to find these um, book review blogs, these um, community blogs. Number six, think outside of the book industry. So this is what you were just talking about, um, Judith. Mm-hmm. Are, are your super fans also super fans in another genre or media type? For example, are your target readers interested in cosplay? or soap operas, or musicals, or science fiction television, or heavy metal music, or whatever it might be. I I had an author I was talking with the other day, and she said, well, one of the things I do to promote my book in in the real world, offline world, the real world, is I go to cosplay conventions. So cosplay is short for costume play. And there are these conventions, you've probably seen the funny pictures of them, where we all dress up as our favorite superhero or whatever. And she goes to to the... a convention dressed up as the protagonist from her uh, fantasy book. And she's got a great costume. It's very well put together, very professional looking. And people ask her, who are you? And, of course, what does she do? She pulls out a book note or a bookmark, uh, a card, with, probably with a little, uh, uh, obviously with a URL on it, maybe with a, um, a barcode on it. And um, she's promoting her book in person at cosplay events. And Which that's is a- how she's... One way she's finding her super fans. Great idea. Okay, so we're going to take our final break. Can you believe it, Bill? Um, and when we come back, here's what I want you to do. Let's let's go. How do we Google these people to find them? And then lastly, um, let's talk about some action steps that all our listeners need to start doing right now, today. We'll be right back. I'm Judith Bryles. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. This is the Tokenet Radio. 
Radio Network. Radio with a cutting edge. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. You know, I, we can't leave this segment. And Bill has given us such fabulous information. Um, and I you know I'm loving it. And I'm certainly going to be using super readers and super fans with my clients. But I think that one of the things you all need to know that Bill will be doing a session on this at the Author You Extravaganza on Thursday, May 7th. And he's, you know, the visionary in marketing for Book Fuel. So, Bill, take a few seconds and tell us what Book Fuel is. Sure. We actually have just launched a new service at BookFuel, and uh, the idea here is you are, you are a self-publishing author, and you may not be confident that you've got all the steps lined up, you know what order to do them in. Um, you may be working with a coach, which is fantastic, um, but you want one place to organize that work and, and, and learn the best tips and tricks for each step of the way. And so we've got this uh, new service called Launchpad. It's free to use. You go in there, you start a book project, and it essentially steps you through all of the uh, editing, all of the publishing, and all of the marketing steps. And you answer just a few questions at the beginning to say, you know, what's my, what's my budget? What am I planning on spending in time and money? You know, do I want print or not? Do I want hardcover or not? Do I want right? So you answer ten questions. It gives you a customized project that you can work through. It's very easy to use, and uh, it's actually our second iteration. So we learned a lot from the first one. And uh, we think it's very, uh, very valuable. And it's free. So Launchpad, is, you can find it at bookfuel.com. It's mm-hmm. a great way to uh, start and manage, whether you're doing it by yourself or doing it with the help of someone else, your book project. It takes mm-hmm. you through every single step from editing to publishing through marketing and gives you a customized plan with steps that uh, are the best practices just for your goals. So bookfuel.com I'm really encourage everyone to go they have a series of information educational there's tutorials there take advantage this is one of the you know these secrets out here people don't know it's so exciting to come across and find so Bill thank you okay so let's jump into this because I know we only have a short period of time so basically Google is a friend to go to find out who some of these players are correct yeah, I think the last step in your sort of your getting in the mindset of your super fans and finding them is you want to go into Google and just search for you just use this simple statement. Best online romance reader communities. Best online uh diet uh book reader communities. Best online science fiction reader communities. And Google will give you pages and pages of results and they're not all going to be great. Um they may not all be fit fit your needs, but go look at them. I guarantee you you'll find some gems. And, of course, we know what you do with the communities, right? You, you get in way before your book is available for sale. You engage with the community. You mm-hmm. support others. You review others. Mm-hmm. Uh, you add interesting fun. You have interesting and fun things to say to the community. And then when your book comes out, now you're ready to give a couple of uh, uh, promos to your book. And the community, in turn, will probably support you. And they're community super fans, so you're, you're right where you want to be. Mm-hmm. So those are pretty high-level things about how do I sort of put on my FBI hat and profile my, my target readers. What are some very specific actions that I want to take? Well, 
I, I've got 12. We won't have time for all of them. I'm going to say sort of two things. First of all, when you're trying to find your, convert your super readers into super fans, there are two main things to do. One, you need to connect with them. You need to make a personal connection. This is where uh, when we started we talked about extending yourself to your, to your super fans. You know, if, if someone said to you, I could be a full-time professional writer for, if I said thank you to 4,000 people in person or over an email or with a comment, you'd probably say, sign me up. I can do 100 of those a day, right? And then the second thing is you want to give your super fans a reason to buy. The most common reason to buy is a premium with their purchase. So you might put deleted chap, make deleted chapters available, do signed uh, books, bookmarks. Uh, there's all kinds of premiums that you can give away with your writing. So now let's fit a few. Let's let's look at the various stages of marketing and talk about what do we do to connect with our fans. If you think about a, a, a three by four grid, across the top three columns are the three stages of your marketing effort. There's pre-launch, launch, and post-launch. So what do I do before my book's out? What do I do in the weeks surrounding my launch? And what do I do after it for as long as my book's on the shelf? Then along the left-hand column, you've got four rows. Those four rows match up with buyer behavior. So buyer behavior is simply the um, awareness that your book exists, the interest in finding out more about your book, the trial or evaluation of your book, and then the purchase. Right? Everyone, when they're purchasing something, goes through those four basic stages of buyer behavior. So for every stage in the buyer behavior, for every phase in your marketing, that's a little box in our grid, and there's 12 things you should do at a minimum in every marketing plan. Let's talk about a few super fan things that you could put in those 12 boxes. So you're in the pre-launch stage, and we talked briefly about this before. Ask your fans, your super fans, uh, in the super reader pool directly to provide feedback on your book cover. Right? You're working with a professional book cover designer. They're going to give you four, five, six comps, and you don't know which one looks best. You might have some ideas about which one you like best, but it's much better to ask your potential market which one would com- would be more compelling and be more interesting for you to buy my book. So that's one. You do that in the pre-launch stage during the awareness uh, uh, stage to meet, to meet up with your buyers, your target readers in their awareness stage. I'll give you another one. Um, if you are in the uh, – we're talking about the evaluation stage of buyer behavior, and now we're around the launch time of your book. So if you want super fans to become interested in your book – um, at the launch stage, find some blurbs from well-known authors, well-known critics, well-known readers, or even personalities that are popular in your genre. It's not impossible to get book blurbs. You have to reach out to your network. Um, you have to probably have extended yourself first. Um, but find some blurbs that you can use in your marketing campaign, on your author website, in your book description, maybe on the book itself. That's how you can get super fans interested in evaluating your book. Um, if you want super fans to try your book, okay, in the, in the pre-launch stage, I would recommend loading chapters of your fiction book, if you have fiction, your fiction book on Wattpad and start building exposure in that genre community. Because at this point, your book is edited. It's a good book. Of course, that's, that's the basic assumption for all of this. You've, got to, you've written a good book. Now you're up on Wattpad. You're starting to build interest there, and you can, you can convert that Wattpad super reader super fan interest into your super fans uh, with some additional work around uh, around your launch, and then I guess sort of the last thing I would do, uh, or the last tip I would give uh, in the purchase phase of buyer behavior, I would say that uh, in the pre-launch stage, trying to find super fans, I would execute a Goodreads giveaway or giveaway slash review campaign. Um, Goodreads has got a. a you want to be really careful. You want to investigate it fully. You want to understand the pros and cons of engaging in the Goodreads community. But there's no doubt about it. They have a concentrated um, group of super fans. And so that's a great place to reach them and convert them to becoming your super fan. Let me ask you this, Bill, that in, in doing this kind of your pre-launch stuff, are you giving them uh, – you, you understand putting up a couple of chapters and things. Those are going to be PDFs mm-hmm. of a chapter. Mm-hmm. That you're not mailing anything out. Would it, right. Oh, no. Electronic. Are you, are you sending out a whole – a hard copy book? Or are you saying, you know, here's a book for PDF to look at? So, How, um, what are you, what are you suggesting here? 
Yeah, Wattpad has, of course, their own uh, reader app, and, and you would sort of cut and paste chapters up into their system, and then they would take care of the delivery of it. Um, uh, what I would recommend on your author website is mm -hmm. to make available in PDF, in Mobi, in EPUB format, all three electronic uh, book formats. I would say you positively want to make your book available as a download right from your website before it's up for available for sale. Not the whole book, sorry. Just maybe up to the first, if it's a fiction book, I would take it up to the first, uh, maybe not the whole first act, but up to the, perhaps the first challenge in the story uh, and on a slight cliffhanger. That's perfectly acceptable because you're giving it away for free. If you have a nonfiction book, um, give them a teaser of your methodology and maybe the first step or two in your methodology with the first few example um, worksheets or recipes, whatever it is, it is that's in your nonfiction book. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely make it available uh, for trial. Make it easy for people to try your book. So you're not suggesting they get the whole thing? Oh, no. No, the only time I would recommend using your whole book as, mm -hmm. a, um, uh, as a premium or as, a, uh, as a, uh, an exchange is when you, and it's, it's one of the things we haven't talked about, but it's also in, in uh, I think, an important list of things you want to do during launch, in your pre-launch phase mm -hmm. to generate evaluation and trial, you want to go to the semi-pro reviewers on Amazon, and there's tools out there that can help you pull down a list of two or three, four or 500 of them, and you want to individually contact them all with a personalized email and say, I would be happy to send you an electronic or paperback copy of my book in exchange for an honest review, and you, know, you, you personalize it more than that. But that's the only time I would be sending out full copies of the book is when I'm trying to generate reviews from the uh, uh, super reader um, amateur reviewers in Amazon. Mm. Okay. So is that the PDF is not going to do it to send that to them. You really need to, a physical book. They're all if they're, different. If they can the, choose that. The, I mean, that's yeah, my experience. I used to ask people. Different. Yeah. Yeah, I used you to. When I which kind, reviews. Which kind exactly. All right. Well, Bill, we are out of time. I can't believe it. And that I would encourage everyone to go to the bookfuel.com site and sign up for their blogs so you can have that. Secondly, come to the extravaganza, authoru.org, and we've passed all our early bird time. So all I can do is give them to our listeners. I'm going to let you sign up as a member, which saves $100, and use the code AU2015 which will save another $100. And Bill will be there all three days. I'm certainly going to be there. Come and join us and meet new super fans. How's that, Bill? <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you so much for having me, Judith. Thank you. Terrific job. We'll be back with you next week. John Kramer, author of 1001 Ways to Market Your Book, will be with us. I'm Judith Bryles. Have a great week. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week.